Today we're going to talk about slurry transport. Uh, the first and most important thing about slurry transport is that you have to assume uh, certain properties of the slurry, including an overall mixture density, which is simply a weighted fraction of the concentration and the densities of the solid and the fluid material. The next is the flow condition and as diagrammed on here the most important parts of the flow condition are going to be related to the velocity of the flow and the pressure drop that's experienced. You can separate out the two different kinds of flow as a non-settling flow and a settling flow dependent on whether or not the particles are typically going to settle under those conditions. And we have three primary sorts of flow in a typical settling slurry. And those are a homogeneous flow, which is shown up at standard velocities and higher pressure drops, in which case the particles are uniformly distributed and flow through as if it's a, uh, the same type of fluid, regardless of location in the pipe. At slower velocities, you end up with heterogeneous flow, which means you actually get some separation within the pipe of the larger particles and the smaller particles. And then there is, at even slower velocities, below the critical velocity. So below the critical velocity here, we end up in the saltation regime. And in the saltation regime, we now have particles that begin to roll and slide across the bottom of a pipe. For non-settling slurries, we simply have laminar flow and turbulent flow. These tend to be for much smaller particles, uh, hence there also tends to be a much lower uh, pressure drop than compared to the settling velocities. While there can be many different sorts of flow of a slurry, just like a typical fluid, where you can have Newtonian or non-Newtonian models, uh, things can flow as uh, dilatant fluids, uh, pseudoplastic fluids. Uh, the most important factor is really the uh, particle size as well as the velocity that you're going to be traveling at. So when designing any sort of slurry transport system, you need to know what that critical settling velocity is, and you design your system to always work somewhere above that velocity. You never want your system to flow at a slower velocity. So it's not just the bulk flow rate in terms of volume per time, but the actual velocity in terms of uh, how many meters per second it's moving. Therefore, the Reynolds number is going to be key for doing any of the calculations for slurry transport systems.